Also, we're going to talk about the top nine marketing campaigns that you need to put in place for the end of the year. Now, I understand that there are a lot of different things that you could do. There are a lot of different marketing campaigns you could put in place, a lot of money you could spend. But trust me, the top nine campaigns to close out your sales year. This is where you need to spend your time. I would say 95% of the marketing that you need to do until December 31st needs to be these nine campaigns that we're about to go over. Now, in order to make sure that you're set up for these nine campaigns, there are some things that you're going to need to do. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you need to set an agency standard for coverage recommendations. You guys hear me talk all the time about policy weaknesses. And one of the things that throws me is how agents go, well, Billy, what is a policy weakness? What's considered a policy weakness? So I'm going to make this really simple for you. You set an agency standard for coverage recommendations. You do that per policy, and you do that per coverage. Any coverage that falls below the agency standard is a policy weakness. So as an example, if we, see the, if we say the agency standard for auto insurance is 100, 300 uninsured and underinsured motorist, motorists, then anything that falls below that 100, 300 is a policy weakness, and it triggers the sending of the policy weakness clause of the confirmation email. And if it's strong enough in the agency, if you guys have designated this as a premier coverage, then it triggers the sending of the decline coverage form. So the first thing that we need to do in order to prepare for these nine main marketing campaigns is you need to go through coverage by coverage, policy by policy that you sell, and set an agency standard. So I'll give you a few here. Auto, 100, 300 uninsured and underinsured motorist. Auto, $50 per day rental reimbursement. Home. $500,000 family liability. Commercial, 60% coverage on loss of business income. Those are examples. But again, I want you to go policy by policy, coverage by coverage. Now when we talk about doing a policy weakness campaign or reaching out to all people that have this particular weakness, you, your staff and the agency, the whole culture, won't wonder what the hell is a policy weakness. See, right now, people are doing it based on how they feel, what they think, you know, what, what, they, what they've seen for 20 years. That shouldn't be the case. The case should be one agency standard, okay? I'm going to take questions. Let me just say this. I'm going to take questions because uh, I know that you guys will have some, and I'll open it up for questions and answers toward the end. So what I would do right now if I were you is just kind of jot that down and go, I want to ask about that if that's a question that you want to ask, okay? The second thing that you need to do, so let me make sure because I don't want to jump around. Number one, set an agency standard for coverages by policy. Number two, you have to have your basic marketing tools. Your basic marketing tools, we're going to use the acronym PETS with video. Well, PETS is the acronym, and then we're going to use the words with video. So PETS with video, P-E-T-S. That stands for phone or postal mail, email, whether that's text or video emails, text messages, and social networking. So PETS is an acronym that stands for phone and postal mail, that's the P, email, text messaging, and social networking. And with video means whenever you have an opportunity, send a video. There are two types of videos. There are promotional videos, and there are personalized videos. So if I'm doing a quote proposal specifically for you, that's a personalized video. If I'm doing a promotional video, maybe it's an introduction video, introduction uh, video about the agency, or I'm doing a general put something out on YouTube, or I'm doing a all cars really need to understand this. Okay, that's a promotional video. But there are two types of videos. Promotional and personalized. So let me say this again. I know I go for you guys that are brand new, I go over the same thing two or three times because I never know which way you're going to get it. So you may get it the first time I say it this way, and then I'll say it again, and somebody else will, will get it, and then I'll say it a third time, and somebody else will go, oh, that's what he meant. That's why I repeat things two or three times, not because I'm just old and senile, but because I really feel like different people learn 
based on how we phrase different things. So you have to have your basic marketing tools. Pets with video. Pets stands for phone, email, text message, social networking. Video, two types, promotional and personalized. And the email part of this can be a text-based email like you normally send out, or it can be a video email. Any of that will work. Okay? Does that make sense? So those are the two things that you have to have in place in order to really make these nine processes, these nine marketing campaigns work. So let's start with the actual campaigns. Number one, create an agency introduction video that will be used to promote the agency. That's, that's campaign number one. Create an agency introduction video that will be used to promote the agency. Now, if you're one of our members, you know just, just type the word video in the search box, and you're going to see our, in, our Inspire Nation introduction video script. That's real important for you non-members you know, that may be thinking about jumping over to us one day. We give you everything, like every email template, every script, every video. Every, we give you everything because I don't want you thinking about shit. I just want you to do shit. Does that make sense? Yes, I said the word shit. I don't want you thinking about shit. I want you doing shit. And you can't do that if you're too busy thinking. So that's why we give you everything that you need. So you need to modify our script if you're a member. If you're not a member, your video script should really be simple and tell about your strengths. More importantly, it should solve a problem. The way, you are, the way you become important to other people is by solving problems. So maybe your video script is, hi, I'm XYZ insurance agency. I'm in blank, blank, blank city, blank, blank, blank state. Okay? Uh, we specialize in writing homeowners with newer homes and that have teenage children in the household because the main problem that I want to solve for you is I want your kids to understand the importance of insurance. I want your home to be covered with under the latest available coverage. I want to make sure that you've got all of your, your, your up to code, that all of the new laws that came out about building, that you're covered for those. And if you've been with the same insurance company for five, six, seven years, they may not be looking at those things. They may not be looking at code upgrades. They may not be looking at that. We do. So these are part of the problems that we solve. And of course, in solving all those problems, we're going to try to get you the best price that we can. But one of the things you have to understand, price is a side effect of coverage. Okay? Price is a, this is, this is a teaching moment for all you guys that are on the call. Price is a side effect of coverage. What does that mean? That means that without coverage, there is no price. So you're going to pay based on the coverage that you select and all of the things that, that allow you to qualify for that coverage. So, yes, we look at your credit history because we're on the hook for – now, this isn't the video. You're not saying this in the video. <clears throat> um, this is a teaching moment. But, yes, we're going to look at your credit because you bought a $600,000 house, and now we're on the hook for it because you're paying us two or $3,000 a year in premium. Really? I want to know who I'm doing business with. Yes, we're going to look at your claims history because are you the kind that won't do maintenance and try to use insurance to cover your claims? Then I don't want to do business with you. So, yeah, we're going to look at all those things. But at the end of the day, I'm going to recommend the best coverage for you. You decide what you want to pay for. Okay? I'm going to tell you what's best, what I absolutely think the standard should be for your policy, and then you decide what you want to pay for. I just threw a lot of stuff at you. Take some of that and throw it into a video. Whatever pieces you like, throw them into a video. But you need a video. Now, once you have that video, what do you do with it? You load it on YouTube. I know there are a lot of other tools you could use, Wistia and Venmo and all this other stuff. I get it. But Google is still king of the search engine world. And when people search for, some, for stuff, they're using a Google search bar. Even if they're using Bing nine times out of ten, Bing is going to deliver the same results that Google delivered because Bing is using Google behind the scenes a lot of times. So, guys, you still need Google, okay? You still need a Google search engine. Put your video on Google. Make sure that you use the same keywords that, that people are searching for. That's why we teach our members a tool called Ubersuggest, U-B-E-R-S-U-G-G-E-S-T for our non-members. 
but Uber suggests because it tells you what people are looking for on the Internet. Now, we, we tag and put our keywords and key phrases and all that on the video to make sure that when people are looking for new homeowner insurance in blank, blank, blank city with the, that specializes in having teenagers in the house, that you find us. That's what we're looking for. So you want that on YouTube. If you're using one of our electronic business cards that has the video option, you want to put it in that, that electronic business card. You want that video on your website, not just on YouTube. So you're going to put it on YouTube, but you're going to embed it into your website, okay? because that's going to drive people. One of the things Google likes is the longer people stay on your site, the, be the, the better they think you are. So if I can get someone on my site watching a six-minute video, Google gives me love for that because they go, wow, this guy's site must be really good because people are spending a lot of time on his site. Why do you think I put conference call recordings on my site? I put video recordings on my site. I do all these things. I put forms for you to fill out on the site because the longer I can keep you on the site, the more Google says this guy's stuff must be really good because people are sticking around. So therefore, we're going to drive people to his site because his site is so good. Okay, Those, those are things that you want to do. You want to add a link to that video in your email templates. You want to add a link to, your, to that video as part of your autoresponder. If you're doing any kind of outbound marketing and people are filling out, filling out a form or filling out a chat bot or doing something like that, you want to make sure that there's a link. So number one, create an agency introduction video that will be used to promote the agency. You don't need to spend a bunch of money. You can go out and download a free tool called Loom, L-O-O-M. It's a Google Chrome extension, and you can record your video for no price, no cost, okay? and then load it up to YouTube at, YouTube at no cost. Stick it out on your website at no cost. Stick it in your email at no cost. See, you notice I keep saying no cost because this doesn't cost you anything other than time. That's it. So that's number one. Number two. Campaign number two, run a designated policy weakness campaign for current customers. Remember I told you in order to prepare, the first thing you have to do is you have to know what a weakness is. And if you have an agency standard, then you don't have an issue about knowing your weaknesses. Now we want to select a specific policy weakness that we want to address in the agency. Why? Because it's easier to sell something to someone you've already sold something to. All right? It's much easier. More importantly, I want to take care of my own customers. While I'm out here chasing all this new stuff and all that, that's all fine and dandy, I need to take care of my own customers first. So we will select a specific policy weakness that we want to address in the agency. Maybe it is uninsured motors. Maybe it is no jewelry coverage on homeowners. Maybe it is no, 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 no business interruption or loss of income on a, on a BOP or a commercial policy. Who knows? You, you decide. But once you've once you've gotten that list together, then your job is to, one, create a video. There we're back to video, pets with video. Create a video that talks about that weakness. Hi, this is Billy Williams. The reason why you're receiving this short little video is because your policy was recognized as one or identified as one of the policies that has this specific weakness, okay? this specific problem. And we don't want you blindsided if there were to be a claim. If you had to file a claim with this weakness, I want you to know what you're going to miss. I want you to know the repercussions. So that's why I did this quick little Loom video, and I'm just shooting it out to you to say, please call our agency so we can discuss this, we this weakness with you. See how easy that was? Okay. Now, if you don't know how to do a spreadsheet, Guys, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You know, find someone in your agency who knows how to do a spreadsheet. Take that spreadsheet with all the, policy, all the names of the policy, weaknesses, uh, policy weakness customers. Load it up to a tool, you know, like, like Ring Central or, excuse me, not Ring Central, like Lightspeed Voice. Ring Central is not one of our sponsors, so get, get, get Ring Central out of your head, okay? Like Lightspeed Voice, and let's go ahead and call those folks. So we're going to use pets. We're going to phone them. We're going to email them. If we have permission to text message, we're going to text message them, and we're going to do social networking and put out a post. Okay? A lot of you are on the call today because you received a text message from us this morning saying, hey, we had a conference call starting at 10.30 a.m. Central. We'll make sure you show up. All right. So we use all of that. 
Okay. Uh, we, you know, when, when, when we're calling all our people and reminding them and doing our, our, weekly, our weekly training and all that, we're reminding you, don't forget we've got a conference call, don't forget we've got a webinar, don't forget we have this, so we're using phone. We shot out an email. All of you that are on my email, email newsletter list, you got an email. We send out a text message. And we did a social networking post because I know Kat from Agency Zoom responded to it and invited all the Agency Zoom customers to come out and listen to this conference call. That's the basics of marketing, pets. Phone, email, text messaging, social networking. So you want to run that policy weakness campaign, identify a weakness, and you want to use those methods along with video to explain the weakness and explain the repercussions of not having your recommended policy. So hopefully this is all tying in. Let me, let me go back because I know we just had a bunch of people jump on. Let me go back. First thing you got to do is you got to know your agency standards. Agency standards could be 100, 300 for auto, 500,000 for for liability on a homeowner's policy, uh, 60% loss of income on a BOP or on a commercial policy. These are the standards, and anything below those standards, bam, we consider that a weakness. Next, you need your basic marketing stuff: pets, phone, email, text messaging, social networking. Those are the basics of marketing. Then you want to create an agency introduction video. And now we're on number two, which is identify a weakness, a specific weakness for your customers. And please don't tell me that your customers don't have weaknesses. Weaknesses fall under three categories, no coverage, low coverage, or missing a complementary policy. Like I said, a policy weakness falls under three different categories, either no coverage, low coverage, or missing a complementary policy. So if we're looking at auto, maybe you don't have rental and towing. That's no coverage. Maybe you only have 5,100 uninsured motorists. That's low coverage. Or maybe I've got your auto and home, but we've never discussed life insurance, never discussed an umbrella, never discussed a secondary home. Then that's missing policies. So those are considered weaknesses as well, and we want to make sure that we're talking about those. So that's number two is the policy weakness. Number three is, uh, as we come down, number three is going to be touch base with your referral partners. Okay, reconnect with your existing business referral partnerships. What's a referral partnership? It's a professional organization, person, association, whatever, that has sent referrals to you in the past. You want to reconnect with those folks. How are you going to reconnect? You're going to use pets. Again, everything's basic, basic marketing. So you're going to call them. You're going to send them an email. You're going to shoot them a text if you have it. If you're connected on social networking, maybe you'll DM them. And you're going to create a video that says, I know you sent me business in the past, and you and I have lost touch, but I'm still here, still protecting our community, still plugging away, and I hope that you are doing the same thing on your profession. Let's reconnect. Let's see if we need to get back to sending business back and forth to each other. So reconnect with your existing business referral partnerships. That's number three. Number four, get new or updated Google reviews from your top – there's going to be three. There's going to be three particular people or three particular entities you're trying to get Google reviews from. You want them from your top ten revenue customers, your top – 10 revenue customers. If it's been over a year or two years and they haven't written you a review, or maybe they wrote it but it was over two years ago, get on them. Get on them. So top 10 revenue. You want it from your existing business referral partners, and you want it from any new insurance customer. Those are the three entities that you need to have Google reviews from. Let me explain why. First of all, a Google review is almost like a wedding ring. The reason you wear a, a wedding ring is to say, I am committed, I'm in a committed relationship with somebody. That's why you wear a wedding ring. Okay? A Google review is a wedding ring of the Internet. It's basically saying, I am in a committed relationship with this business. So that means if you're one of my top ten revenue customers, I want you to publicly acknowledge that we're in a committed relationship. If you are a business referral partner that is sending me business, I want you to publicly acknowledge that you are in a committed relationship with me. 
And if you're a new insurance customer, I want you to be willing to tell people that you are now in a a committed business relationship with me. That's why you want to get new or updated Google reviews from your top 10 revenue-producing customers, from your existing business referral partners, and from new insurance customers 180 days and newer. All right, that's number four. Number five, make sure you use pets with video to follow up on all existing prospects and deals that have not closed and might have fallen through the cracks. Let's be honest. You called them once. You emailed them once. You didn't hear back from them. Hopefully you ex-dated them so at least you can run a report and get back to them. But if you didn't ex-date them, they're, they're on a pad somewhere on your desk, a yellow pad, you know, or maybe their stuff got thrown in the trash, or maybe they're just sitting out there in a to-do task somewhere. Get back to those folks. It's end of year. Let's close out the year strong. So we're going to use our phone, email, text messaging, social networking. We're going to create a video, that, and we're going to reach out to all those folks. Hey, this is Billy from XYZ Insurance. I quoted you about six months ago, eight months ago, a year ago, whatever it was. Or I quoted you in the past if you don't want to put a specific date on it. I quoted you in the past, and we weren't able to win your business. But we know it's getting close to the end of the year. Now is a great time to go ahead and sit down and look at your insurance so that you're going into 2021 with the best insurance coverage, the best insurance agency, and the best insurance recommendations. Again, create a quick little video. Shoot that out. Notice, pets with video keeps coming up. It's going to continue to come up through this whole conference call. Phone, email, text messaging, social networking, Create a video. Create a little video for every little scenario that you can because that's something that works for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can send it over and over and over, and it's just going to keep working for you. So number five, follow up on all existing prospects and deals that uh, that have not closed and that might have fallen through the cracks. Number six, reach out to all of your currently working, quoted, not sold, whose renewal date is October through January. See, on number five, you're reaching out to everybody. doesn't matter. If you quoted them and they didn't sell, they may have fallen through the cracks, you're just sending it out. You're, you're probably going to automate that process and email blast and you know, do something like that. But number six is specific to people who have, who have an upcoming renewal between October and January because insurance is important to them right now. They're coming up on renewal. Now, here's the deal. If you can't pull a list of your X dates of your quote, quote it not sold, that are coming up in October through January, you're running a, you're running a, a bad data management operation. That's the best way. I, that's the nicest way I can say that. You're running bad data management operation, a, a, a bad data management operation over there, Okay. So you should be able to do that. Pull everyone who's coming up for renewal, whose policy is renewing between October and January, whether that's your current customer or whether that's your quoted not sold. Okay. Number seven. That was number six. Number seven, create a video and contact all former customers whose policies are coming up in October through January. See, the first one was quoted not sold, meaning they were just a prospect, just a prospect. Okay? This one is a former customer, someone who did do business with you, but they left you. But their policies are coming up for renewal in October through January. That's number seven. Number eight, buy a prospect list. Because some of you guys are newer agents or you got bad data management. So you can't even pull reports on your current customers, on your current book. So you're actually going to have to go out and buy new lists. You're going to have to go get new qualifying uh, leads and all these other things. So you've got two options here. You can either prospect for the lead or generate your own lead, or you can buy a lead. Okay, Pure and simple, you can buy a lead. So what are the best leads if we're talking about buying leads? Right now, from October through December 31st, what are the absolute best leads to buy? Number one, any property-based 
internet lead, property-based, meaning homeowners, commercial, uh, whether it's a, a business owner policy, any property-based internet lead. Do not, do not, do not waste your money on auto leads. The only people that make money, and this is a Billy thing, you know, this is just this is Billy's opinion. The only people who make money on auto leads are providers who sell auto leads. That's my opinion. And I've got 16 years of backing this up to prove it. But homeowners, totally different world. Totally different world. Property, totally different world. Why? Because every business owner I know is either a homeowner or is going to be a homeowner. Every homeowner I know owns a car. Okay? Even in New York City, you can live in the 97th floor of a high-rise condo, you probably have a car somewhere. So every homeowner has a car. But every auto person doesn't have a home. Some of them stay at home with mom and daddy, so they may not even have a renter's policy. So why not go after the highest value stuff first? So I like to go after homeowners, and then from that homeowners list, I can pivot to anything else. Hey, I see that we're quoting your home. By the way, are you a business owner? Or do you, or, yeah, I am a business owner. Hey, we, we also offer business insurance as well. Um, do you have employees? Y- yeah, I do. Great. You know what? We also offer workers' comp and other things that will help your employees. Gotcha. Do you, have, do you drive a car? Yeah, I got, you know, me and my, uh, great. We also offer auto. You see how that pivoted? I mean, that was so simple. But if I go after auto, I don't have as much pivot. But if I go after property-based stuff, I pivot. Now, of course, there's specialized things. If you're Medicare supplement, if you are benefits, if you're annuities, if you're life insurance, then, of course, you're going to go after that specific niche. But even those guys, even those gals probably have a home. So I literally can take that homeowner's list, maybe a coal states, take that homeowner's list and pivot to every other product that's out there. If I get a list, uh, let's say I do a coal states, and I get a list of homes that are 1.5 million and up, and I'm a captive agent, and I need to sell what's known as EB, all those little, little policies that these carriers want you to sell, like golf carts and you know uh, condos, secondary homes, and you know all this kind of stuff. That's going to come from my homeowner's list. So who owns golf carts? Probably people who have a little extra income. If I'm, if I'm struggling to make my car payment, I'm not going to have a golf cart. Okay? That's just how it works. But if I can, I can take that homeowner's list, which will help me identify specific economic groups, and use that to pivot to my conversation. All right. So buy a prospect list. That's, that's number eight. Now, 8B, that's 8A. So 8B is, but Billy, I want to generate my own list. I, I've got 20,000 former customers and 15,000 prospects that's in my database. I don't want to buy a lead. I want to generate my own. All right, well, here's what you're going to have to do. Still pets, P-E-T-S, phone, email, text messaging, social networking. So how would I do that? Well, phone, I'd use a tool like Lightspeed Voice. I'd load in my list. And I would start dialing for dollars. Email, I'm going to take a tool, preferably out of my agency management system or my CRM like Zoom, like agency Zoom. I'm going to take that email and I'm going to set it up in a a marketing campaign and I'm going to blast it out to my former customers. It's going to have a link to my video on it. It's going to have a link to my appointment scheduler on it so that I can make sure that I'm being very efficient with that email. If, If I've been asking for text message permission, all along, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take that policy weakness and I'm going to shoot out a text message. Now, I'm not a big believer in shooting out text messaging uh, for promotional things like, oh, I see we have, uh, we have a sale coming up on auto policies or something. You know, not that you can, but, but I'm, I'm not a big believer in doing that because people opt out. And I don't want to have a bad list when it comes to text messaging. So I tend to only text message to people that have opted in and want information. So I'll take that text message list. 
and I'll send it out to my policy weakness. We primarily use text messaging for three things. We send it out when we have an announcement for an event or activity that's going to benefit our customer. We do it when we're coming up for policy review or, or end of term kind of review, and we do it for birthday. Those are really the three times that we, we text. Now, of course, we'll text in, intermediately or in, in the middle of all that if you schedule an appointment. Then that means you're going to get a text message reminder about the appointment. You know, or if you texted a question to us, and so we're replying back to that. But as far as just blasting you first without you doing something that, re that requires a response, we normally use three things. One, as an announcement for upcoming events and activities. Two, to remind you that you need to schedule an appointment. I'll put my appointment link right there in my text. Remind you you need to schedule an appointment so we can do a review of your policy. And three, as a birthday wish. Okay, we found those are the safest. So let's go over eight again because I'm spending a lot of time talking about some things and I don't want to confuse you. So number eight is buy a prospect list. What do I do? Or it's A and B, excuse me, get a prospect list. A is I don't want to do it myself, Billy. I want to buy one. The best ones are Internet leads. Oh, I didn't go over all three of those, did I? Let me come back. The absolute best one would be a property-based Internet lead. Number two is a warm transfer lead. A warm transfer lead. Now, if you're not set up to be able to take an inbound call, don't spend money on warm transfer leads. If you're not set up to have automation, send out, um, I mean, within seconds, like agency Zoom, so within, within seconds, send out a reply email to someone that has requested an Internet quote or filled out a form online. Don't waste your money. Just go buy aged Internet leads because you're turning them into aged Internet leads anyway. An aged Internet lead is something that's anywhere between you know, three days and a year old or something like that, because if you're buying Internet leads and you're not getting to them right away, then by the time you call them this afternoon or tomorrow morning, 20 other agents have already called them, which means they're not even answering their damn phone anymore. So you're not going to get them again until a week later. Well, why would I spend $15 on a lead that I'm not going to talk to for a week when I could just spend $3 on the same damn lead a week from now? So number one, property-based Internet leads. Number two, warm transfer leads. If you're not built for those, then go buy aged Internet leads, okay, aged Internet leads. At least the people re requested a quote and – you you have a better chance of talking to them. Now, all Internet leads suck. Let's get that straight. All Internet leads suck because half the people don't even really want to quote. They're, they're shopping to get an idea on price. They don't even own the cars or own the homes a lot of times that they're, getting, that they're requesting a quote for. So you're getting all irritated and frustrated and all this kind of stuff. I called 20 of them and only three of them answered, and two of them didn't even really want to quote. Now, this, this sucks. Guys, it's a numbers game. That's why you use technology. That's why you use Lightspeed. That's why you use uh, Agency Zoom. That's why you use Insured Mind. That's why you use your, your AMS like Hawksoft. That's why you use those tools so that you're not sitting there getting frustrated. The automation is doing 90% of the work, and you're talking to the people who really want to talk to you. So if you're using Insured Mine or you're using Agency Zoom and you set it up to where when a lead comes in, that lead is automatically re auto responded with an email, automatically auto responded with a text message. And on that email and on that text message, there's a link to your introduction video. So they're spending time with you, not the agent down the street. Okay. There's, there's everything that they need. There's my appointment schedule. There's everything right there. Now, automation did 90% of that, okay? So don't get frustrated. Just use the automation and technology. And then if you actually have a big, long list, you've been an agent a long time, you have your own list and you want to do it, use pets. Phone, throw it in a dialer, schedule somebody to call and let them make calls. Set up an email, shoot out that email, make sure you got your video, your appointment scheduling link in there so people can schedule with you, and shoot out that email. If you've got permission to text message and it's your current customer or a policy review, go ahead and shoot them out a text message. Do a social networking post. Do a, social, do a paid ad on Facebook. 
Do a paid ad on Google. Do a paid ad on YouTube. YouTube ads are amazing, and I'm surprised more people are not really getting into that, but YouTube ads are amazing. Okay? But do a paid ad. That's still pets. Phone, email, text messaging, social networking. It's just phone, you're, auto, you're not auto-dialing, but you're power-dialing it. Email, you're shooting out a blast with the link to your video and a link to your um, appointment scheduler. Text messaging, my current customers, so letting them know I need to talk to you. And then doing a social networking, either post and a social networking ad, a Facebook ad, a YouTube ad, even LinkedIn. We do ads on LinkedIn. So do all those particular ads. It's still pets. Okay, it's still pets, and I'm still using video. And then number nine, make sure that you're – number nine, cause, and I'll go over all nine again. Don't worry. Get ready for your questions. I'm going to open it up here for Q&A. But number nine is make sure that you are hitting all of the agency triggers. What are agency triggers? Birthdays. Every customer that has a birthday – Something about their insurance profile has changed. Whether you're going from 24 to 25, 45 to 46, 55 to 56, it doesn't matter. Every birthday, something about your insurance changes. Every birthday, life insurance becomes more expensive, okay, because life insurance is based on your age and your health, and we, we normally don't get healthier the older we get, and we damn sure don't get younger. So life insurance gets more expensive with every birthday. As you, as you mature, we tend to buy more expensive things and receive more expensive things on our birthday. So when you were 22 and you had a birthday, you're getting some completely different stuff at 42 than you did at 22. At 22, you had a birthday. You were just happy to get a little party. Maybe they took you out to dinner and, you know, life was all good. Now, 42, you're getting a diamond ring, you know. 62, you're buying a new sports convertible. You're doing all kind of stuff. So every age tends to increase the value of the things that we get. That's a trigger for an insurance agency, and we should be reaching out to those folks on that trigger. So every birthday, they should get something from us. If you're a member, guys, you know we have a big birthday process that is not big as far as problematic or as far as hard. It's just we are very serious about touching people on their birthday. Okay, And then policy reviews. Policy reviews are very, very important, as we all know. The industry is kind of built on policy reviews, but we've gotten away from them. Automate it. Okay? Automate it. No, I don't want Judy sitting up 10 hours making calls to people who don't answer the damn phone. But there are things I can do. Again, I can use a Zoom. I can use you know, a Lightspeed voice. I can use an insured mind. I can use an insurance agent app that, that kind of triggers people to say, hey, it's happy birthday. Don't forget to call the agency. Or you're coming up for your policy review. Make sure you call the agency. I can use all those tools to make sure that I'm getting what I need. And if I don't want to use the tools, then you know what? There are all these programs out like Agency VA where I can actually hire a VA to call every one of my customers that's coming up for renewal, every one of my customers that just had a birthday. Or I can have them call on policy weaknesses and say, you have this specific policy weakness, and the agent wants you to schedule an appointment so they can discuss it with you. Well, can you talk to me about it? No, I'm not licensed. I am part of the team that's reaching out to you to make sure that you schedule an appointment with the agent or the agency so that they can have this discussion with you. Okay, so that's number nine. Let's go through each one of these again because I know I talk fast because I get excited about what I'm doing. So number one, create an agency introduction video that will be used to promote the agency. Number two, run a designated policy weakness campaign for current customers. Number three, Reconnect with existing business referral partners. Number four, get a new or updated Google review from your top ten revenue customers, existing business referral partners, and new insurance customers 180 days and newer. Number five, reach out to all existing prospects and deals that have not closed 
and might have fallen through the cracks. Number six, reach out to all quoted not sold whose renewal date is in October through January. October through January. Number seven, reach out to all former customers whose renewal date is October through January. Number eight, buy a prospect list or generate a prospect list. If you're going to buy a list, your best list are property-based Internet leads, warm transfer leads, or aged Internet leads. If you want to generate it yourself, okay, if you say, no, Billy, I want to do this myself. I've got a big enough list in my own book, then make sure that you're using X dates that are coming up October through January. Make sure you're using pets, phone, email, text message, social networking, to reach out to those prospects and X date list that's, that's coming up in October through January. And make sure you create a video that allows them to interact with you. Okay, Loom does all that kind of stuff. Next is, if you aren't sure what to do for your social networking, then either do a post, but the most effective is going to be run an ad. Run a paid ad, whether that's a YouTube, which in my opinion, YouTube produces better results than Facebook. Not just my opinion, but our tracking, our analyzing, everything that we do, YouTube produces a better result than Facebook ads. So YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is, but use a paid ad. And then finally, number nine, use the agency's triggers for anybody that's coming up October through January, birthdays, policy reviews, policy weaknesses. Those are the, the first three I would tell you, birthdays, policy reviews, and policy weaknesses. Now, of course, your product is different. You may, you may be a Medicare supplement agency or Medicare Advantage agency or a benefits agency or workers' comp or whatever. So you're going to, because of the nature of your business, you're going to have a little bit different approach to some of these, but they're all just as effective. They all work, okay? They all work. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to open this up, and we're going to do a Q&A. The way you, way you get into the Q&A session is you hit star six. Star six is going to put you in my Q&A, my, uh, my queue, basically, and then I can answer your specific questions. So go ahead and hit star six. If you have questions about anything that I talked about, and then I will unmute you and we will talk. So first I see Lisa Wilson. Lisa, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you here. Hey, Lisa, can you talk to me? I can. Can you hear me? How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much. Um, here's my question. How do you overcome negative social uh, media? So I had a client that posted something nasty about my agency, and it, it actually was about the company, but mm -hmm. it reflected poorly on me. How do you overcome something like that? Do you block them? Do you No, 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 no. No, no. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. First and foremost, if they wrote something about the company, that is not a reflection on you. You feel like it's a reflection on you, but it's not. Okay? okay? And okay. so the way that you okay. the way you address that is by letting them know um, I either I'm an I'm a, a captive agent with this particular company or I'm an independent. So let me ask that first. Are you captive or are you independent? Cap at the time it was captive. I'm independent okay. now. Okay, so as a captive agent, I am bound by the the rules and guidelines of the carrier. My job is to take care of the customer. The company's job is to take care of the policies, the customers, and of course their bottom line, their premium, and they have guidelines in place to take care of that. We did everything we could from an agency level to make sure that 
all of your data was accurate, that you were taken care of, that we answered all your questions, but when things happen at a higher level than us, there's nothing I can do about it. You, you know what I mean? Okay. And though you might be upset with the company, the thing is, what I, what I really want you to think about is, are you upset with the company or are you upset with my agency? Because if you're upset with my agency, then you need to let me know because those are things I can handle. But if you're upset with the company, I'm just a representative of the company. I don't run or operate the company. Very good. You see what I'm saying? So you take those mm -hmm. words. Remember, I came from the captive side before I went independent. And so I would get all these folks that would, you know, oh, this carrier sucks. Or, you know, I was with Allstate, so you know, I can say the name. Uh, they'd say, all Allstate sucks, or State Farm sucks, or Farmer sucks. And, they, and I'd say, well, you know what? They, they may not be good based on your unique situation. Because we do pull credit, because we do look at guidelines, because, you know, we try to give you the best coverage possible, but sometimes we just, we can't convince you to get the best coverage to protect you, and then when you have a claim and you don't have the best coverage, it's easier to blame it on someone else than our own decision making. Mm -hmm. And I would say stuff like that, Lisa. I would put it out there, because at the end of the day, you're not going to blame me for shit that I didn't do. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and if yep. you do blame me for stuff that I didn't do, I'm not going to just take the brunt of it and just go, oh, well, I hope you're happy, you know. As I, no. We did what we were supposed to do in our agency, the, but it went above our head, and so therefore you're unhappy with what's above our head. But did we screw you down at our agency level? No, we didn't. And don't be afraid to say that, Lisa. Okay. Did that answer your question? It does. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. You're, you're welcome. Okay. All right, let's go. Lisa, I'm going to mute you again. Let's go with Liz Jordan. Liz, you're on with Billy. Go ahead. Hey, Billy. If we're, if we're going to do a radio, if we're going to do a radio station, let's just do it right. You know what I mean? Hi, Billy. What you, what you got, Liz? I effing love you. Thank you, <laughs> Thanks darling. Thanks for your Thank follow up. You. I really appreciate. It. I haven't talked to you in a long time, so I do appreciate the emails and the text messages about the meetings and your information is so informative and I really do appreciate it. You had thank mentioned you. VAs. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate you. Um, and which VAs do you use? I use agency VA. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are many of them out there, but I mm -hmm. have to go with the ones that I feel comfortable with. And the way I feel comfortable is which one will respond to me and my needs. That's what I'm uh -huh. looking for because, you know, they, they all, they're all good, but I tend to stick with if I got a problem today, am I going to have to wait 24 hours to get a call back? Or am I going to get a call back from some peon who can't answer my question? Or am I going to get a call back from Ben or Wes, who are the, the, the founders and leaders of the business, saying, okay, Billy, tell us what the problem is and we'll get our team on it. That's why I use Agent VA. Okay. Another question, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. You have a package with your agency for other agents that want to join. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, is there a link to that? Just go out to inspireanation.org. We have three membership levels. Um, we have a level one, which is basically you. we give you all our resources. We give you everything that you want to do, and we'll help you out you know, every, every couple of weeks or whatever. Make sure you're on track. Then we have a, a level two, which is every two weeks you're meeting with my, um, one of my team. To, they're going to spot check you, and they're going to do all that. And then uh, every, about every two weeks you meet with me. I'm sorry, you meet with my team every week, and you meet with me every two weeks or one of my senior advisors every two weeks. That's level two. And then level three is you basically want us to run your agency. And so okay. my team is going to meet with you a couple of times a week to make sure that we're tracking all your KPIs, that we're doing all those things. And then once a week you have your Come to Jesus meetings with me. So um, that's level three. Okay. So that's what we do. Let's go out to inspirenation.org and just look and see if it's something that you want to be involved with. Okay, definitely. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much, Liz. I appreciate it. Keep up the good right, work. Let's, okay. Thank you so much. All right, so next is Carneal, my man, my golf buddy, Carneal. What's up, Carneal? Hey, Billy, how are you doing? Man, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'd be better if you played more golf with me. Well, listen, we're going to work on that. You, you, 
I, I, I have the feeling, though, I, I, I see the headlights in the rearview mirror on the golf game. Dude, I've been out there putting in time, baby, putting in time. I, I, I know you have. I know you have. Well, listen, I uh, was uh, one last question about the videos. Okay. Um, have, in your research, have you determined what a good length should be or, you know, what is the maximum length the video should be or, or is there a maximum? There is no maximum length. The, the, here's the deal. As long as the video is addressing a problem, that video can be an hour long. No one cares. But if it's okay. just promotional, hey, I'm Carneal Chambliss, and I'm part of Chambliss Insurance Agency, and life is wonderful, and here's my YouTube ad, and here's my this, and here's my that, and, but you're not addressing a problem, people are going to click off. Okay. But right. no one walks away when you're healing. No one walks away from the doctor when the doctor is curing you. No one okay. was, when the doctor's like, you know, oh, I'm going to go ahead and do this brain surgery. Well, you know what, doc? I need to run out to my car real quick. No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's the same thing here. As long as your videos are discussing problems that your consumers or your customers have, they will be there forever. They can, they'll last okay. an hour. But if uh, you can't, yeah. once, you, once you run out of problem-solving conversation, cut the damn video off. You're done. Well, good deal. Okay. Listen, thank you. Thank Enjoy you, sir. It. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Hey, Carneal, let me get you back on real quick. Seriously, are we playing tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. Are we playing tomorrow? For real? Yeah, I'd like to play tomorrow afternoon. Okay, cool. I'll get back with you. All yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. All right, let's go with Sarah. This Raynock. I guess this is Sarah. Is this Sarah or is this somebody from Sarah's office? It's somebody from Sarah's office. <laughs> well, hello. Who am I speaking with? Uh, with Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer, what question can I answer for you today? Okay, just a, like a follow-up to the previous question on the length of the videos. If it's just an introductory video and you're not mm -hmm. addressing any problems or anything, what would be a good length before somebody... Three to five minutes. Three to five Three minutes. To, yeah, if you're using... You're one of ours, so just use our script. Have you been in the video library and looked at our introduction script? Um, no, I have not. Okay, all you do is just go into go into the video library. You you can you can log into the video library, right? You have access to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Up in the search box, just type in YouTube. That's it. Just type in YouTube, but don't hit enter. Remember, never hit enter because we have to index those thousand enter. plus pages that we have in the video library. <laughs> so just type in YouTube. And then you'll it'll see you'll see creating an introduction video, or you don't even have to type mm -hmm. in YouTube. You could type in introduction. You could type in the word introduction. You could type in the word video, but you'll see creating an agency introduction video. And then when you get there, you'll actually see the script. I think it's like number three of the attachments, and we have a full blown script that's been written out for you. You just need to modify for your agency. Okay. Okay. Were you were you no, doing this I while I was talking? Did you look and see it? No, I didn't. I wanted okay, to make no sure that I could write down anything you said. I, I got you. It's yeah, so just, like I said, type in introduction, <laughs> type in video, type in YouTube, type in whatever, and you'll see uh, you'll have different drop-downs, and then you'll see creating an agency introduction video. Click on it. Uh, not only do we explain the script, but we also explain how to create the video you know, if you want to use PowerPoint, if you want to use visual aids, if you want to do a live, whatever, and then there's your script as well. Awesome. Cool. So you, right. what do you recommend more, like the live video or doing... Um, live is always better. Um, yeah, I mean... Live is always better? Live is always better. Most of my videos are PowerPoint because I have a face for radio more than television. So <laughs> most of mine are most of mine are PowerPoint, but if you you know if you look and like an ordinary human like most people, then video live video is always a little more catchy. And if you use a tool like Loom, where it's so simple, you know you got your little webcam and you're sitting there and you're recording it, and you use a tool like Loom, it's really really simple to do. Okay, is that more that Loom is that more generated towards like a app on? A uh, mobile phone? No, no, it sits on your computer. It's on the computer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it works awesome. with your webcam. 
works it just opens up the mic you know when you click on it, it says please allow microphone and camera access that's all it does mm-hmm. it just works with your webcam awesome thank you so much billy i appreciate so all welcome. this information today <laughs> oh you're so welcome i appreciate you for being here all right, guys, I don't want to go over an hour. I try not to keep you over an hour, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute you, ma'am. Guys, these are your top nine marketing campaigns. If you would like access to this recording, you need to be a free member. Join our freemium membership. Go out to inspirenation.org. Now, for our members, it's obviously going to be posted in the video and document library. Okay, You don't have to worry about that. It's going to be posted in the video and document library. But if you're not a member – and you don't want to spend money with us, which I don't know why you wouldn't. If you spend $100, we're going to make you $10,000. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't. But if you just want some free stuff, join our freemium membership. You'll see the tab, freemium, not premium, freemium, F-R-E-E, freemium membership. And you will have access to our YouTube, our podcast, some of our recorded sessions like this. And, of course, it's all promotion for me. So we are Absolutely want to stay in your, in your network, in your ecosystem, so that when you do decide you want a really good mentoring company, that we're there for you. Understand the difference before we get off. The difference between a mentoring company and a consultant company. There are a lot of consultants out, very few mentors. A consulting company works with people who do what you do. They work with a lot of people who do what you do, Right? A mentoring company is someone who still sits in the same seat that you're sitting in every day. I still sit in an insurance seat. I'm not the sitting agent because I've grown beyond that level, but I still sit in the same seat. I still hire. I still fire. I still train. I still look at payroll. I still look at commission statements. I still you know, look at problems. And you know, if it's something, a really big issue, like a, if we rode a commercial airport or something like that and Somebody needs to deal with that issue, that's probably going to be me. So a mentor does what you do on a daily basis. We just do it at a different level. So all you guys are like, Billy, I appreciate your information. I appreciate your knowledge. The reason why is because that has bit me in the ass too. I'm only talking to you about stuff that's bit me in the ass or is biting me in the ass right now. That's why I can talk to you about it with such passion because I know what you're going through. Okay? And I'm not knocking consulting companies. Those are, those are, there are some great consultants that are out there. But unless you've owned an agency, unless you've sat in an agency seat, unless you've written a policy, unless you understand people firing, getting up and walking out on you, you know, in the middle of the work day, unless you've gone through that experience, carriers calling you, talking about, you know, your loss runs and all that, unless you've gone through that experience, you can't tell me what I'm going through. But that's what you guys are feeling and sensing when I'm talking to you, because I sit in that seat every single day day okay with that being said i'm gonna let you guys get back to work and i'm so honored that you guys will spend time with me today be on the lookout i don't know if i'm going to do a two-day workshop this month i might skip a month because our attendance has been dropping but be on the lookout for our fix my insurance agency workout uh, workshop excuse me our fix my insurance agency workshop that we have our two-day virtual shop and for other conference calls that we have with that being said this is billy williams i appreciate you guys being here bye-bye